welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. Today I want to share with you my purchases that I made on my recent fabric shopping excursion in Singapore. If you haven't seen the video, I will link it up here. Um, I had a very short amount of time in Singapore, so I didn't really get a lot, but I had an amazing experience. So if you've watched the vlog, you'll have seen I got a little bit flustered. <laughs> Um, so I thought best that I come back here, calm down, sit down and tell you a little bit more about it and show you my purchases. So first things first, a little bit about the trip. Now I didn't have very long. The reason being was we were on our way home from Australia. We arrived on New Year's Eve at about six o'clock in the evening. By the time we got to our hotel, the New Year's Eve celebrations were underway in our hotel. They were having a huge party down in the car park, right outside the front of the hotel, which our bedroom looked directly over. So it was incredibly loud and noisy part of us wanted to take part but the other part of us just wanted to chill out we've been on a long flight we were hot and bothered so we decided we would pop out for a little walk around sort of the local area get something to eat which we did come back to the hotel and have a little bit of a chill out um, mr mac and i popped downstairs uh, when the free wine came out at 11 o'clock picked up a couple of glasses of wine and brought it back up to the room and we celebrated midnight in our dressing gowns <laughs> As soon as midnight came about, I messaged my family back home here in the UK, spoke to them for about 20 minutes or so, and then we went to sleep. The next day, we had promised to take our children to Universal Studios. It was their Christmas present from us and our Christmas present to each other as well. So we spent the day at Universal Studios and we were out until about 10 o'clock that evening. Um, on the way home, we stopped by those spectacular, beautiful illuminated trees in the Marina Bay Park and we were fortunate enough to capture the light show. I'll pop a little bit of footage in here for you. So we're going to stop, grab the cameras and enjoy the show. So as you can see, it's something well worth seeing and definitely one to tick off the list. We had such a short amount of time in Singapore and I had so many things that I wanted to do. So that was definitely one of them. Straight back to the hotel, a good night's sleep and then we woke up in the morning, had breakfast and this was our last day then in Singapore. We were due to fly back to the UK at 11 o'clock that night. Uh, we had our hotel room until three. So I literally had the morning to go fabric shopping and I was on a tight deadline because I knew I had to be back at the hotel by about one-ish to allow me to repack all of our suitcases, sort out all of our purchases. My husband had gone a little bit mad in Universal the day before and bought himself quite a few transformers, as you do. So I had to make sure there was room in the case, have a good juggle around and I knew it was going to take some time. That and the children wanted to have a swim in the pool. So I had from about 10 o'clock to one o'clock to leave the hotel, find where I needed to go, go fabric shopping and get back again, which sounds totally achievable. And if I was getting on a train and running up to the Gold Hawk Road, going fabric shopping for an hour or so, getting back on the train and coming home, doable. I know where I'm going, I know what I want, I know exactly how to get there. But this for me was a place on a map and that was all I had. 
and it was stupidly stupidly hot if you haven't been to singapore before in the summer um it's not so much the heat but the humidity that will get you the minute you walk out the door you can hardly breathe and everything about you is wet um so it's not great fun <laughs> so yes the chopping trip was fun it was eventful it was great to do a little adventure but by the time i'd actually discovered where i needed to go and needed to be i was already clock watching to come home so if i went again it would be much easier because i would know exactly where i was going so if you haven't watched the video i would suggest you watch it now and then come back and watch the rest of this one because i'm going to talk about the different stores and the places that i went so the first shop that I visited was, and I'm probably going to butcher this, it's called Sing Mu Heng. Um, I'll pop it along the bottom just in case because my language skills are atrocious. Um, it was a beautiful shop, it was really nice, it's where I picked up the majority of the items that I purchased. Um, I didn't buy any fabric in there because if I'm honest the fabric was much the same as I can get at home, there was nothing special, it wasn't discounted in any way, it was about $15 a metre which is probably about the same as I could spend in my local fabric shop on quilting cotton but what I did buy was a few fun interesting things the first being a roll of mesh now I've always used the Annie's mesh um, before it isn't particularly strong though and it will tear quite easily this mesh is much stronger. I can really pull on this and it's really kind of heavyweight, but it's still, as you can see, super bendy and flexible. So I really like this product. Um, it just calls itself mesh fabric. It is half a meter, it's 45 wide, 55, so just over half a meter um, for $5. And I'm actually wishing I'd bought some more of this now. Um, because I think this is an absolute bargain. So five Singapore dollars is about £2.75, roughly. Um, so that's ridiculous. So cheap um, and really lovely quality. So I'm probably going to make some more packing cubes with this um, because I want some nice sturdy ones for my trip. Um, but I might also keep a little bit of it to work into a new organiser project that I'm going to be making fairly soon it's up here at the moment it kind of needs to make its way to paper and then be sewn i also couldn't resist buying some of this faux leather um it's nice and thin it's not too thick so it should sew really nicely of course i went for rose gold and some hot pink again i haven't got the measurements on here but i would say just under half a meter probably um, and it is really wide there's plenty of it here and again these were five dollars each um, so they're destined to be necessary clutch wallets or potential handbags or something I don't know they're going in this stash but super super cheap then I bought just a couple of fat quarters these in con in relation to the faux leather I thought these were quite expensive um, these were $3.60 each and they're just some plain spotty ones. I've just got a brown spot and a dusky pink spot. They might go along here. I might even put some faux leather into my packing cube and do, do a combination of all of these together. Quite possibly, who knows. Um, the next thing I bought was hardware. I was disappointed because they've got some gorgeous hardware that's really cheap these swivel clasps are a really lovely gold color they're not a horrid gold they're a really nice cold they look good quality and they are one dollar ten um which is ridiculous you can't even get that for one pound ten at home let alone let alone a dollar um so i did buy i did buy two of those what I was disappointed with is that they didn't have the sliders and the D-rings to match, um, which is really frustrating because I would have liked to have bought kind of a whole set and then that way I know I've got stuff to make a bag with. I did manage to find some D-rings in another little shop that are a similar colour. So I have at least got D-rings, but I don't have a slider to match. So it might have to be um, a fixed strap or I might just use them for wrist 
wrist wallets or something like that I don't know but at that price I couldn't resist you'll see from my video as well they did also sell big bags and you could buy like 50 pieces of these and they worked out even cheaper I think they worked out about 80 cents um, if you bought a big bag of them but again if they'd had the matching hardware then I would have done that because that would have been a brilliant way of making up sets um, for our necessary clutch wallet workshops here um, but they just didn't have the, the whole range so a little frustrating it was slightly better when it came to the silver though I did buy two silver ones again these were $1.10 each they do have sets of D-rings to match and they were just a dollar, so 50 cents each. And they also have sliders. Um, so I did get everything I need for the silver, um, which is nice. So I've just put that in my stash. Again, I haven't got a clue what I'm gonna do with it. I'll probably use these silver ones. Um, if you've watched my second Australia haul video, I'll link that up here too. That went live earlier on this week. Um, I showed you some beautiful silver animal print fabric that I was going to make a messenger bag with so I think this hardware will probably be used for that but I don't know and then I bought myself a buckle now this is for a super secret project um, I will be revealed very very soon when I was in spotlight with my mother-in-law I came across a really good ready-to-wear purchase um, and I looked at it and said that's amazing we could make that it would make a fantastic class I've got a photo of my mother-in-law wearing it um, so that I can recreate it and I need a gold buckle so that has plans and that was just $1.30. So yeah, hardware, super cheap out there. And it's really nice quality. I would say it rivals Emmeline bags. And it could even be Emmeline bags. The quality is fantastic. I'll have to show it to Sean when she next comes um, from Kittenish Behaviour. But I'm sure she'll agree with me. So Sean, if you are going to Singapore on your way to Australia, um, bear that in mind uh, that the hardware is well worth purchasing. And those big multi bags come from this Sing My Hung shop. I also bought my mum a present. She will have had this probably by the time this video goes live. Um, I bought her a new brush for cleaning out the sewing machines. So it has a lovely brush on one end and like a bottle brush on the other so you can get in between all the metal bits. Um, she will absolutely love that. And that was just $1.50. So happy belated Christmas, mum. <laughs> So once I'd been into those two shops, that was when I then travelled and found the real kind of heart of the fabric market. Um, and that was where all the apparel fabrics were. But as I said in my video, it was so overwhelming, so hot. There was nothing there really that I couldn't have got on the Gold Talk Road. Um, and I thought I'm not just going to buy stuff for the sake of buying it because I've also got to lug it back to my hotel and it was super, super hot. So after I've been wandering around for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I thought, no, do you know what? I need to buy something because I want to take something special home with me. I always like to buy something when I go somewhere so I can have a garment or a bag or something to remind me of the trip. So I decided I needed to buy something that was traditional. And so I went to another store. I have got the details, actually. I'll put the picture up here. Again, I'm not gonna try and butcher it. And um, this was the store that I went to. And this is what I purchased. It's some beautiful silky satin. I think it needs a wash because it is quite stiff. But you can see it is a border print along the bottom here. Now, I absolutely butchered the name of these flowers. It made me laugh. So the lady in the shop told me, and her accent said that it had the peonis flower on it, um, which was very good for love and luck. Um, obviously, I Googled it when I came home. Of course, it's a peony. Um, you can see that it's a peony. Quite clearly, it's a peony. But at the time, I didn't realise. <laughs> but it is beautiful. It's this gorgeous pink, which is one of my favourite colours. Um, it's got lovely baby pink and lilac silver leaves. It's just gorgeous. In my video, I said that I was going to make a sew over, over, blah, 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 a sew over it Eve dress with it, but I'm not. Um, I know exactly what I'm going to make with this because I have so much of it, and let me tell you why. So, when I saw the fabric, I said to the lady I needed three metres because that's what you need for an Eve dress. I then realised that it was more of a market stall than a shop, and so she didn't have a card machine. So I said to her, I need to go and get some cash. Um, where's the nearest cash machine? So she pointed me in the direction and she said, I'll cut it for you when you come back. 
understandably. Um, obviously I could have just been having her on, gone off and never come back. But I did come back. And when I came back with my cash, she said to me, uh, you wanted three meters, I've measured it. There's only four and a half on the roll. I can't cut it because she'd be left with a meter and a half. Obviously it's not really a lot of use to anybody for this kind of fabric. Um, but if I wanted to buy it all, she would do it for the price of four meters. And I was undenied about it for about a split second before realizing that this was $8 a meter. So for $32, I would get myself four and a half meters of beautiful satin. And if I didn't use it all, then I was pretty sure there was someone at BTHQ who would be able to make use um, of another meter and a half of silky satin. So that's exactly what I did. I took her up on her offer and I now have four and a half meters of silky satin. So it wasn't until I got home that I realized exactly what I want to do with this. I have a lovely pajama set of um, wide legged trousers, a lovely silky cami with a lace edge and a beautiful robe with big long sleeves. It's full length, it's bright red um, and a very similar kind of design. Now I bought the whole set from Primark last year. I love it, I always feel really elegant when I wear it. Um, I take it on holiday with me. I swammed around my room um, at the Bellagio in Vegas earlier on last year in it and I always feel really great in it. So I thought I've got all this fabric, there's absolutely no reason why I can't recreate that garment. The wide leg trousers are super easy. The cami top I'll probably do um, just an Ogden cami because I know that fits nicely and it will hang nicely but I might put wider straps on it. Um, and then the robe I will look for some patterns to make a similar one. So if you know of just a really long elegant robe with drapey sleeves that has a waistline and a little bit of flair to it please do share that with me down below. Um, again I'm not going to rush to make this, I'm going to wait until I find the perfect pattern, make sure that I've got enough fabric, I can use the border print along the bottom of the robe and along the bottom of the trousers and potentially along the bottom of the top too although I'm not too worried about that um so yeah absolutely love this looking forward to getting cracking with it and hopefully by the end of the year <laughs> you'll see me in a lovely three-piece set that i've made with my gorgeous fabric from singapore that was just 32 dollars so i hope you've enjoyed this little covering of my little trip to singapore a nice little chatty chatty video with you showing you what i've got and i will see you again really soon thank you for watching